Good morning. So I thought I would, um, I just got back from breakfast, so I'm going to do my exchange and I thought I would show you what I'm having to do again. I'm going to flip you around. So I have this here. Ooh, this is weird with the camera. Like it's just trying to get that up a little bit. A little bit more. Oh, hold on. Okay, so I have this set up so that it is um, ready for some Alcavis. Whoop, there we go. And then I'm going to put in a dose of heparin. So I have to put Alcavis, an Alcavis drop on top of this to disinfect that, and then also a drop on there to disinfect that. Okay, so I got just a dot on there. You can kind of tell. And then over here, it's a little more difficult to tell, but it's on there. And I time this for two minutes because you want to really get that area disinfected and that area disinfected before you put in your heparin. So I'll be right back. Okay, so it's done it for two minutes. And then I take a clean piece of gauze and I have to... See if I can do this. Soak up. It's really hard on the camera. There it goes. Soak up the excess. There. Use a different section to soak up that. There. Without touching. And now it's ready to go. Get rid of that. And take the needle, see if I can do this one-handed. Okay. There you go. And we're going to go in the middle like that. All right, now I have to use my hand hand. So I'm gonna so now I have to use my other hand. <laughs> so I'm gonna put you on pause. All right, so I fill it up to the point that I need it to be, and then I inject it into here, pull it out, that's done, that's done, and now I'm just going to shake the bag and hang it up and then put this stuff inside of me. Uh, my first step will be to drain what's in me already and then I'll put this stuff with the heparin in, my dextrose with the heparin in it, and that's going to help combat fibrin. And fibrin is what likes to um, Fibrin is what likes to clog up my port. <laughs> so, and my tubes and uh, my catheter and all of that. So that's why it's important that fibrin doesn't get a chance to build up and it has because I didn't um, order my heparin right away and it takes at least a week to get here. So I've gone a whole week at least, almost two weeks without it and I can see the fibrin in my tube and I can see it when I drain and my drains have been pretty low well not really low but certainly not what they could be at so I'm just hitting it really well today with the heparin so all right and I felt froggy but I'm not sick or anything it's just that this is like when they cut the grass I I, I must have an allergic reaction or something because that's what happens all right I'll talk to you guys in a little bit Happy morning. It is um, Saturday. <laughs> I was like, what day is today? It is Saturday. It is about 10 o'clock. Um, I did my first two exchanges and then I thought I would come out and visit Glenda out here at this little craft show that she does. Um, she makes homemade jewelry and beautiful items. So I thought I would come out and support, get a little bit of sunshine, get out of my house and just enjoy some goodness that is around town. So I thought it would take you with me. Um, not too much on the forefront. I did have really good drains yesterday because um, remember I had to put in heparin because my fibrin was so high and I could see the fibrin in my tubes. Well, um, the result of that will be that your drain volume is higher because it's actually seducing toxins and you know like allowing um, more 
um, filtration and stuff. And so both my ending drains were 25, which is really great because the last couple of days they'd been like 23, maybe 24. But so it's really good that I just hit myself up with <laughs> uh, heparin so that um, I can get control again over the fibrin because it's just not good because it doesn't give you a good drain volume amount that needs to come out. So remember you put in um, 2000, I don't even know what it is. Is it milliliters? Um, but you know, your bag of, of dextrose, you put in um, 2000 and you want to always get the 2000 out. And once in a while, if I'm like super dehydrated or if I haven't, um, sometimes I, it's just that I, I've done literally nothing. So I'll do my exchange at six, go straight to bed till nine, get up and there'll be nothing drained because I've, I've slept the entire time. So once in a while it'll do that. You just don't want that to happen a lot or consistently. So when you put in the 2000, you want the 2000 to come back out, but you also want extra because that's showing that the, the dialysis is working and it's pulling the toxins that need to come out of your body. So when it's 21, usually my nine o'clock is like 2000 or 21. Um, and then it just kind of inclines from there. But usually, usually, usually my very last drain will be 25. Once in a great while, it's 26, but that's very rare. But I really want it to be 25 or 24 just because it's showing me that my dialysis is definitely working and that is the goal of this whole thing. So um, I am glad to say that yesterday I did have two, two 25, so yay. Um, also, UPS showed up and delivered my dextrose, which is new because Baxter usually does. And Phil came and brought me caps and um, my box of supplies, which is like the gauze, the sterile, the disinfecting, you know, that kind of stuff. And that was it. And so I was really concerned about the dextrose being delivered by UPS because if you remember, in hindsight, um, UPS tends to just dump it all in front of my apartment. And so when the guy showed up, I happened to have the door open because I was enjoying the day. And he's like, oh, knock, knock, you know, I have a delivery. And I was like, oh my God, I didn't even know you guys were coming with that. And I can't lift it. Like there's, I'm not allowed to lift that. And he was so nice. And he's like, I'll just put it, where do you want it at? And so he, he put it all in my bedroom. It's all kind of like, not as lined up as I would like it to be, but I didn't care. I was like, as long as it's in the house, like I can manage to rest and wait till Ben comes on Monday and have him, you know, line it up the way it's supposed to be or the easier way for me to be able to, to do it um, or to, you know, get the items. So, but I was so grateful that that guy did because he doesn't have to, and I don't know that they're allowed to. And he wasn't even in a UPS truck. He was literally using his vehicle and was delivering for UPS. Like, it's wild. I don't understand how all that works. So it, I was just so grateful that he did. And I gave him a Gatorade and I was just like, you know, I really appreciate this because they would have had to stay outside like this whole time. And so that's got a little frustrating because I understand that. I understand like shipping can be kind of hard right now because of, you know, how the world is. But at the same time, the dialysis comes from the United States. It's not being shipped here from someplace else. So because of that, I don't understand why Baxter, a giant, giant company, can't hang on to their drivers and get things delivered the way they're supposed to be and not asking the UPS to do it. But, you know, I, I'm not behind the scenes. Sometimes I wish I would like to be so I could figure out a better way for them to do this because again I don't know that that UPS is allowed to bring the items inside um I was just so thankful that I got a guy who did um so I I don't know like Phil my guy who has always delivered to me is actually getting a whole new route so I don't get to see him anymore and it's like, 
you get to know the drivers because they're literally coming inside your home. They're very respectful. They're very quick. They're very non uh, traumatizing or like they don't um, mess with your day or anything. He'll call me the night before and tell me like what time he's coming. Um, that way I know like what time to aim my, my dialysis exchange at and you know, so it's, it's a bummer to me that they changed it all up and that his route's going to be different and that UPS is delivering when they've hired more drivers. Like that's, that's not necessary. I don't, I don't understand it. Or at least have UPS deliver the items to the warehouse and then the where, then they can take it from that point so that it's always delivered in the house because I have a 13 year old kid who can bring the items in. Not a lot of people do. And so I don't know what happens when you're a person who can't lift or barely goes out of the house or has more medical issues than just dialysis and you you can't move those boxes like it's just it's not a good system it isn't so i don't know that's just my little rant for the day i guess for the supply day yesterday but overall it all worked out and i'm thankful that again he did he brought the items inside and um he's super nice super nice guy so um, yeah, so I'm going to head out here and go out. It's a little bit warm today. Well, it's only going to be like 90, <laughs> which is a nice, nice, beautiful, cool day in Tucson. But I always feel like, oh my gosh, it's so hot. <laughs> All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.